Welcome back to the Are You in the Book podcast. My name is Eric Wobinaw, the president of the Baseball Blue Book, and today we are joined with head coach Anthony Pla out of Lincoln University. Uh, coach, how are you today? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me back on this again. I appreciate the time. Well, I appreciate you uh, joining us, and it was good to meet you uh, at the ABCA conference. Always uh, a great opportunity to meet new new people and uh, reconnect with the old. Uh, but this this show this this episode is all about you. Why don't you go ahead and start with uh, a quick introduction? Tell us a little bit about you. Um, I always like to hear kind of the journey. Um, so spend a few minutes just kind of talking about how you got to where you are, and and uh, some things that people might be interested in hearing about you. Sure. So uh, mine was, uh, I guess, there's, a, there's quite a few people that have been in my shoes before. Um, I went to University of Bridgeport out of high school in Connecticut, and I had an unbelievable career there um, with uh, my teammates and players and coaching. And I really just uh, found a passion for coaching when I was there. And I was lucky enough to be able to be offered a graduate assistantship at uh, at Bridgeport and uh in 2002 to 04, I got my master's degree and started my coaching career there. Um, and I also coached a travel ball in that time, the Connecticut Blue Jays, uh, which luckily, luckily for me during that time, I, I had some great uh, young players come out of that program that are now that are now playing professional baseball. Um, but I just had a, a huge passion for the game. And um, a few years later in 2008, decided that I wanted to give a shot and, and um, put my resume out there to try and find a head job and be my own head coach. Um, and thankfully, Lincoln University was that kind of gracious host that allowed me to do that back in 2008. Mrs. Diantia Ford Key, our former athletic director, she gave me the opportunity. Um, and 16 years later, here we are, um, still Division II. Um, now, I took over that program transitioning from D3 to D2, not realizing it was a part-time job. Um, so I was given a, a plethora of things to do over my first few years there. So while I was at Bridgeport, I was the assistant AD for compliance and I was coaching baseball. And then um, when I was offered the position at Lincoln, they gave me assistant sports information director duties along with baseball to make me as close to full time as they could. And then my first six to eight years, I was the men's soccer coach for a season. I was facilities guy. Um, I spent time as a compliance person. I spent time in the equipment room. Um, I did laundry, like everything you could possibly do in, a, in the in the um, athletic department. And then in 2016, I think it was uh, fall of 2016, I became the interim athletic director for a year, which was fun. That was kind of behind the scenes kind of stuff. But I was still coaching baseball, so there was a lot of things going on there. Um, and then transitioned back out to the uh, assistant AD for facilities, and I've been that since 2017 um, ish for the whole time. But uh, I've been involved in all of it as much as you possibly can be in the baseball world. I've cut grass. I've turned mounds over. I've put out, pulled out tarps and, you know, raked everything you could possibly rake and cut things down. And, um, you know, we've been in the trenches. Bridgeport was, I was lucky enough over at Bridgeport. We had a big, a bigger staff. We're at Lincoln. Unfortunately for 12 and a half years, I was by myself. Um, and then about five years ago or so now, um, we, we were able to hire a part-time assistant coach and coach Connor, who's been now made full-time. Um, and he's been amazing, a, a really big addition to the program. But um, my journey's kind of simple, but a lot of hurdles in the way um, <laughs> o over the course of time. So I haven't been to many places, but I, there's a lot of things that happen in the middle. You know, you th you said it was simple. That doesn't sound simple at all. It sounded like uh, it was a grind. I think what I mean what I mean by simple was I, I know that some of the journeys of the people that I speak to now, especially with, through the ABCA, like. Some of them have, they, they jump from a high school to a college, to a JUCO, maybe back to a high school. Then they spend a few years at a, at a, at a pretty good D1 or D2, D3 program, whatever it may be, and the NAIA, whatever it may be. And they, they're at, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten different schools before they find the place that they're going to be at for a while. And good point. that's kind of the way that our, our business works a little bit. So yep. I, I had it a, a little bit easier because... I was able to get my GA at the school that I played at. And then six years after I was done, I was able to get a head, a head coaching job at 27 years old. That's unheard of. Um, you know, you really got to put your time in and, and there's, there is a grind. Now I put my own kind of grind, grind in um, as it pertains to you know, the things that I had to do and the jobs that I had to have over the course of all this time. So, so I definitely had to battle that uphill, um, I guess, battle, but 
Um, you know, some of the guys that we talked to, you know, they were, again, they were high school coaches and assistant coaches, yep. and then they did travel ball, which I did as well. And, you know, I still coached Legion ball in the, in the town. Um, so th there's a lot of different ways to get into the game and a lot of different ways to give back to the game. And, and personally for me with the ABCA and everything that gets involved with it, um, my biggest thing is developing players and getting them to be next level kind of people, um, players and people. So for me, that's kind of where I, I push all my emphasis into like, do I want to win a national championship? Yes. Do I want to have guys get drafted and play professional baseball? Yes. All those things are true. Um, I, I want to go win a world series in major league baseball. All the th things are true. And I think everybody would be on the same page. And if they weren't, they're probably kind of crazy, but I think at the end of the day, our job as coaches in this baseball world is to develop younger kids to get whatever next level that may be. So if they're 8U, it's to get to 10U. If it's 10U, just get to 12U, 12U to get to high school, high school, get to college, college, get to pro ball, so on and so forth. And all that being said, it's our jobs also to make sure that they're growing up as young men. Um, That's great. So my journey's given me that opportunity. I was a 17-year-old college freshman. I was a 27-year-old head coach at the college level. You know, hopefully when I'm 47, I can I can move up in the world and become a grown up at some point in my life. But I enjoy where I'm at. Um, so, you know, things things happen for a reason. And I'm thankful for the opportunity that I've had. I met so many great people along the way. And um, I'm lucky enough that my college baseball team has nine college coaches out of that team. Um, so I have a bunch of friends that I can lean on, which is great for me. Um, and, you know, we just kind of push the needle every day we can with with development and getting guys to become better at the game, you know. This is such a great opportunity, the ABCA. I mean, how much, how much more information can I get? And I feel like if I don't go, I'm going to miss out. So, um, but that's kind of been my journey, and, and uh, it's yeah. been a lots of hurdles, lot of lots of up and ups and downs, mo mostly downs at Lincoln. But now we're starting to see all the fruits of our of my labor initially, and with the addition of Coach Connor, it's been like we had our best year last year, and now it's only looking looking up from now from there. That's great. You know, it's it's. It I love how you kind of explain that because a lot of people that watch this are also people that are looking into getting coaching and, and they like to listen to coaches and, and talk about their, their trials and tribulations and their ups and the downs and the paths that they might have taken. And so all paths that lead to a head coach are unique and, and, uh, specific to that, that individual talk, talk, talk about the persistence, the things like that. When you, when you look back at your, your journey and where you're at today, what are a few things that kind of stick out as far as lessons that you had learned and that you are now applying to what you're doing today that you want to also share with the, the, the student athletes that you have? So I'll give you kind of two scenarios on this. The first one is what I used to say, what I used to think about myself was, be where your feet are, be who you are as an individual. Um, don't stray from the things that you were taught, because I think at the end of the day, all of us in, in the coaching world, not necessarily just baseball, we are a, a, a culmination of everyone that's ever been across our paths as far as coaches go. So, you know, as, as a young kid, I had a few coaches in Little League, and then I had a few coaches, you know, I had a couple of different coaches in high school, I had a couple of different coaches in college. I've been around a bunch of guys. So everybody becomes, I become a little bit of everybody. Um, with my own personality, obviously attached to that. So then that's who you get as Coach Pla. I have, you know, 97 coaches plus me, and that becomes who I am. So this is what I think is a great opportunity. Fast forward to me being six, 23 years in the game, 16 years at Lincoln. I now say things like, who are you as an individual? And let's use the, the, the platforms that we have now to make that uh, um, uh, get you out there. So let's just say you're an infield guy or you're a catching guy or a pitching guy and you have some really great ideas. Well then who let's make that something pretty good and throw it on a platform because you have some great information. You have some great ideas and there's, I have no problem listening to ideas. My, the ABCA and, and coaching in general, like if it's not challenging you, it's not making you better. And maybe sometimes if it's not challenging you, it's reinforcing what you, what you know. So the younger guys and the younger coaches and around, like it's just, for me, it's a matter of, you know, who are you? What are you good at? What do you want to get better at? Because as a as a head coach by myself for 12 and a half years, I had to learn everything. Yeah. And I couldn't do everything. I couldn't do it all at practice. So I became this practice planning guru on creating the beast, which a bunch of people know me on. But that's something that I had to kind of create over the course of time. And it was didn't happen overnight. So um, I just think that you know, when players come to us, they know that they're going to get genuine me every single day. I'm going to give them all I have all the time. And one of the things that we say in the recruiting process is I'm going to have your back until you don't have mine. 
meaning you don't go to class, you're not a good teammate, you know, the regular things everyone's going to say on, on, on these apps. But I just think that for me, I want guys that are going to come in and give us that work and be genuinely who they are. The 3.3 student, that's a really good athlete, that's going to work hard and be a good, be a good son, be a good friend. If you're genuinely that guy every single day, we'll never have issues and we're going to continue to get better. So my 24-year-old self would be like, you know, get after it and do all the work that you can. My, my 43-year-old self is the same kind of guy. I'm still kind of crazy and I'll do, I'll rake, I'll drag. I don't do, I don't, I don't, I don't mind any of that stuff at all. But now I want to make sure I know who I am and what I can do really well. And, and I'm not a pitching guy and, I, and I'll be the first one to say that. Can I do some of it? Yeah. I mean, I was a catcher most of my life, so I can see it from that perspective. But I'd rather have a pitching guy who really knows his stuff that can take care of our guys who's done a great job. And Coach Connor has been that guy. So um, I feel like if there's something that you're really good at, exploit it on, on, on and that's just such a bad word, but but let, let everybody no. know it on a, on a platform and use it. You know, there's a bunch of, again, a bunch of guys that we've talked to daily on these apps and stuff like that, that I've become really close with because I love what they got. Like, I'm going to steal it. I'm going to steal everything. And hopefully you guys steal some of my stuff. And and I and that's kind of how the baseball brand grows. You know, that's a, a great point that you made. You know, I, I, one of the questions that I always like to ask is, you know, ba- baseball is baseball, right? I mean, th- there, there's, there's, but there's a lot of ways of coaching it. There's a lot of ways of, of running a program. How do you, how does your program or what do you see that, that sets yourself a little bit unique? Is it, is it because that you're willing to do whatever it, t- it, it kind of go into a little bit of what sets you apart? What did you, what have you learned in the 20 years that players and parents can look at and go, this guy's different. This guy's unique. This is a, somebody that I like for my, my kid to be, uh, to have a little bit of, uh, you know, um, a mentorship, uh, and kind of lead them in the next two to three, four years of, of his life. I, I gotta be honest with you. I, I hope I'm not different in this, in this sense, but this is what I think helps us get players. Um, again, being genuinely myself, when we have our recruiting, our recruiting talks, when they come on the campus, when we do it on the phone, in person, whatever the case may be. I think that when we're honest with them and tell them what we think that that's going to happen over the course of their four years. So I think whenever a parent sits down in our, in our, in our, in our room, in our offices, um, they're going to tell us that their kid's the best at everything. Um, you're never going to have an issue with this son, with my son. He's such a nice kid. He's a great friend. And that's great. And I love hearing it because parents should do that with their kids. But at the end of the day, I think we all know that once that word freedom hits, and they come onto a college campus and they don't have mom and dad to wake them up in the morning and they don't have them to do the laundry and, and cook their food and make sure they're on time and, and bring them to wherever they have to go. It's a lot different. So we try to explain to them during our process and we call it, it's called the power of 168. And what does that mean? That means you have 168 hours in a week. I want you to be able to utilize all of those hours from number one to number 168 as much as you possibly can. That's with getting good sleep. That's with getting good food, nutrition that you need. Um, the, the training that you need, proper training, your classes, your, 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 um, your study hall, your friends, your video games, your social life, whatever, like all of it is going to be encompassed in this 168. And what separates everyone, this is what our conversation is, and this is why I think people enjoy coming, coming to Lincoln. What separates them is what they do with their free time. When they have those few blocks of hours throughout the week and the weekends, what are they doing with that time and what's going to separate them? Because at the end of the day, Everyone wants to be in my seat. Everyone wants to be a head, be a head baseball coach, right? And everyone that's that's striving for that job needs to separate them from everybody else. So if I'm looking at 75 resumes or 150 resumes, what's going to separate me from those other 149 guys? Well, yeah. it's the same thing when we're talking about playing professional baseball or being a professional in business or whatever the case, whatever you want to do. So that's what we preach in our in our conversations in the recruiting process is how are we going to utilize your 168 to make sure that you get every bit of information from Lincoln with our career services center, with your um, resume writing, with your career counseling, all those things like that's important to us because the baseball is easy. Like we're going to go out and have fun. We're going to get bigger, faster, and stronger. We're going to learn the game. All that stuff's easy. So our, we don't really have a big conversation about baseball, right? It's kind of like the easy, you're already here. We know that you can play. We think you can help us play short, third, center, outfield, whatever it may be. We know that. That's the easy part. That's why you're here. Lincoln's a whole different beast. It's an HBCU, the first one in the country, right, which we pride ourselves on. A lot of history there. 
So typically we want guys that want to be an HBCU first and foremost and be at Lincoln. So if you want to be at Lincoln, we want you. That's the first guys we're going to look at. Then we'll go search for guys and hopefully they want to be at Lincoln because we, we treat them right the right way. But at the end of the day, you have to utilize all your hours when you're in school. Your 168 is important to us. It needs to be important to you as well. So if you can pull a 3.45678 GPA or in some of the, the rare occasions of 4.0s, now I know your, your journey is going to be a lot simpler than, than others. And listen, at the end of the day, college isn't for everybody either, right? Mm-hmm. Not everybody needs to go to college, but if you want to play baseball at the next level, typically you got to be a really good baseball player at the high school level to get signed out of high school. And if not, you're going to have to go overseas because unfortunately in, in America here, you got to go play college ball, whether it's the JUCO route, the NAIA route, or the four-year school route. So, or I'm sorry, the NCA route. So, um, you know, you got to pick and choose your battles. But I think when we get parents sitting in our office and talk about the power of 168, um, the 86,400 seconds you have in a day and how we utilize all of those. And, you know, we've heard, I've heard this conversation from so many other people, but we use them and we use them daily, weekly. We give them spreadsheets. Like we, we want them to understand that we don't want them to lose out on their free time. Go have fun, enjoy your friends, play your video games, do all that stuff. After you've taken care of everything that's going to separate you four years from now, because when you graduate, I want you to be able to get a job or, or play pro ball. So if that's the case, then, you got to do something that's going to separate you from everybody else. That's awesome. That's awesome. Power 168. Love it. And it's typical if you take away all the things that everybody else does, now you're only talking about 2 3 4% of that 168 actually does separate you. So I'll give you the numbers. Else. I'll give you the numbers. It's really easy. So we do – it's 20 hours a week of, of baseball. That's what the NCAA allows. You have 15 hours a week of, of, um, of classes, 15 give or take, uh, and then you have eight hours of study hall. So from 168 minus those three, you have 125 hours left. You got to sleep. You got to eat. You got to use the bathroom. We know those six things are going to happen every single day. It's the rest of the time you have. So after all of those hours are counted up, you typically have somewhere somewhere between 42 and 55 hours. So about two days of free time in seven day period. We know most of those hours are going to come on Saturdays and Sundays. We get that. So what are you doing with all that free time? And then the kids will talk, oh, I play video games. I talk, to, uh, you know, I, I go to church and I have a job. I have a girlfriend. Great. What are you doing to separate you in the yep. job force or in baseball to get you bigger, faster, and stronger, to get you smarter than, to get you uh, an internship, whatever the case may be? Like, that's what we build. Baseball is easy. Like I said, baseball is the easy part. We'll, we'll get you bigger, faster, and stronger. We'll teach you the game that we know that's in our brains. I'm going to give you all the information I have. Um, and hopefully you can take it and run with it. That's enough for somebody that would want to look at uh, your school, just so you know. that that That's really, really powerful. Thank you, Coach. All right, so that, now let's talk about um, – you, you, you talked about HBCU, first of the country, Lincoln University. Talk about the history. Talk about the program. Talk about the school and why somebody needs to take a look at the, the, organ, the, the university itself. Sure. So again, uh, Lincoln University, the first ever HBCU, uh, founded in 1854, initially as the Ashman Institute. Now, a um, few years later, it was la- named after Abraham Lincoln during that Civil War time. Um, and uh, there's a ton of history. Like in the front of our campus, there's actually a small cemetery of individuals that fought in the Civil War that were Lincoln University students. Um, wow. The Hosanna Church that's on our campus is the last stop of the Underground Railroad. For those that know what the Underground Railroad is, it was the last stop there before they went into Philadelphia, New York, Boston, everything more north. Um, we've had Langston Hughes and Frederick Douglass and ins- individuals that have been great uh, leaders of our country from years ago. Um, we have Monty Irvin, who's the fifth ever African-American to play in the big leagues, who went to Lincoln University. Now, he never played baseball, but uh, he was a, a track runner, basketball player, and football player. But uh you know, his, um, we inducted him to the Hall of Fame at Lincoln University in 2010, just before he passed away. Um, and what a great ambassador of, of Lincoln. What a great ambassador of the sport. Uh, Major League Hall of Famer, Negro League Hall of Famer, Lincoln University Hall of Famer. They have a whole little league named after him in Orange, in Orange New Jersey, which is awesome. I've been there a couple of times. They're great people. Um, but there's, some, there's just some great individuals there. We're a liberal, liberal arts institution. We focus uh, heavily on the STEM programs. Um, I think we have somewhere over 88, uh, 86 to 88 majors, I believe it is. Um, the biggest ones that we have in our program typically are health sciences because guys want to be strength conditioning coaches, physical therapists, along those lines of, of, um, 
uh, health sciences, uh, criminal justice majors. And we already have a few graduates that are state troopers and work for the FBI and the CIA. So if you need connections, I've got some of those as well. Um, awesome. Uh, we also have guys that do uh, mass communications. We have a multi-million dollar facility on campus that deals with the things we're doing right now, podcasts, radio stations, TV stations. So it's really cool to see. Um, and then a plethora of others in there. Um, we have some computer science guys and computer engineering guys. Um, but I think those are the big three would be um, health sciences, criminal justice. I think computer enge or, or engineering or computer science and uh, and um Mass comm are, are kind of tied on our team. We have a, about a 37-man roster this year. It's the biggest we've ever had. Um, we typically hold somewhere between 30 and 35, I would say. Um, we want to be around a 35 number for the most part, but um, we're D2 D two school, currently in the East Coast Conference. Next year, we'll be moving into the CACC Conference, um, which is in uh, the Central, Central Collegiate Athletic Conference. I believe that's, that's where we're going to. Um, but um, it's, a, it's a great place to be. We give guys opportunities all the time. We don't recruit transfers heavy because we get better academic money for freshmen, incoming freshmen. So we do a, bit, a, a, a better job getting incoming freshmen than we do with transfers. And typically our freshmen that come in, if they're decent GPA guys and good athletes, they're probably going to get a really good chance to play their freshman year. So we don't really sit guys and redshirt guys like that. Um, great. year to year. So, um, and then at that point, the best guys will play. So if unfortunately a junior and senior at the sit, whatever the case may be, then, then it happens, but we like the competition on the field and that makes guys, both of them will get better. So that means our team will get better. So that's important to us as well. But, um, we were, when I first got the job in 2008, we were transitioning from division three to division two. We added football, a marching band and going into division two, those are the three things that we did. And, we're still kind of seeing 16 years later, we're still kind of seeing that transitional process happen because for 60 something years, they didn't have a football program. So when they brought it back, we're, we're now 16 years later, they're still transitioning into, into what it's like to have football with new homecoming stuff and things like that. So um, I think baseball wise, we've, we've got a good stronghold on it. It's a year long program. We have a really good fall se uh, fall season that last last six weeks two weeks of individual skills before six weeks of, of um, fall ball and, and then three weeks of individual skills after then we have winter break, which is, you know, a lot of stuff on their own. And then we start when we come back from the convention, January 9th, is the first day of practice. So uh, we want to get guys in a summer ball um, as many, as often as possible. Uh, and some guys do, some guys want to do internships. Some guys can't afford it. We get that. Some guys stay closer to home and we'll play like a local, a local adult league, which, it's fine as long as they're getting at bats and getting on the mound. The, the, yep. As long as they're playing, we're good. But we want to get guys out there because we do have some players that we think can play at the next level. This year alone, we have six or seven guys I think can play professional baseball. And awesome. and with the processes that we put in place throughout the year, I think we're going to start to get a couple looks um, uh, more so than we do we already have. We, since I've been there, we've had three guys sign pro contracts. Uh, Michael Howard still he's in his going into his sixth year of pro ball. Um, he was a shortstop for us. We currently have his younger brother, Chris Howard, is on our team now. Um, so it's good to have the keep it in the family, and, and he's back at Lincoln. So it's kind of cool to have that. But you know, it's 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 been a great ride. We've had some really good, talented guys. They've been spaced out over years, but I think now we've got a really good group that won a lot of games, or the most games we've ever won last year in Division Two, Division Two era. And I think now they have some really good leadership within the program. And they're going to push that thing forward. Now it's finally out of my hands. It's finally on their on their hands. And I think that's important because I think championship teams, the team leads, yeah, in many ways, in positive ways. And without that, and with the coach leading the whole time, I think it, it holds the, the players back. But what the, when the coach when the coach no longer has to has to lead or tell guys to do certain things, and the players can do that, we, you know, you've made it when that happens. That's great. Okay, a couple of questions. First of all, talk about H uh, the HBCU. What is it? Are the are only minorities able to to, to come come to the university? Kind of go into sure. that a little bit, and then uh, I got a couple other questions after that. Sure. Uh, so, uh, historically, black colleges univer or universities, I believe there are sixty eight in the country. Um, Lincoln again being the first. Anybody can go. It's but it's what um, at HBCUs. I think what 
what drives people to go to them is the history that involves in, in African American culture. Um, there's there we are the most northern HBC in, in the country. Everyone else is more south than us. It, it goes us, and then there's Booby State who doesn't have baseball, Cheney University who doesn't have baseball. The next closest HBC was Virginia State that has baseball, which is you know four and a half hours away from us, and then everybody else below everybody else is below them and out west. So, um, but I think that what what HBCUs really bring is, is the, and they hold on to that, is that culture and that history of African American culture from forever ago. Um, and you're standing on the shoulders of individuals that did some really great things, not only in African American history, but in American history in general. Yep. Um, some great uh, influencers, some great inventors, some great engineers. There's multiple presidents of countries that have come out of our universities. Um, there's multiple presidents of, of universities that have come out. So, um, you know, there's there's some really cool things that if you really dive into what an HBCU is and, and all the different ones that they have. Um, so, for example, a long time ago, Lincoln used to be called a black Princeton and there was a law school attached to it. Well, now Howard University has Lincoln's law school and Howard's really known for their law program now. So cool things to, to go back into and dive into. But I think if you're interested in going into that and understanding what the culture is great, it's all for you. But anybody can come. Um, we have. Uh, white kids, Chinese kids, Filipino kids, a bunch of Hispanic guys. Um, we have people from, from m many different countries. We, we have not just on baseball, but in other sports. We have, you know, the uh, Ireland, France, um, uh, England, Australia, like they're from everywhere. So that's good. It's not necessarily like you that you have to be African-American to come to our school. But I, I know that that's predominantly what we are. Um, but I think that it just gives people an opp another opportunity to go to school and play baseball. And that's kind of how, how I've looked at it. Um, I'm, I'm sure as a, as a young person looking at Lincoln University and what it had, uh, I might have even looked into it. If I know it existed, I just didn't know that it was there. Um, I'm a small I'm a, I, I'm a small town guy now, but I grew up in Queens, New York. So I would, there were schools everywhere that I could have went to. So um, uh, this is a little bit slower paced here at Lincoln University. But the interesting thing is that our student body is from New York. Philadelphia, Baltimore, DC. So lots of city people. And then you, and then you can sprinkle in people from the country here or there to suburbs, but um, it's, it's a very good uh, mix of a lot, a lot of different people. And I enjoy it every day because you get kind of a little bit of this, little bit of that, the South Jersey guys, the New the North Jersey guys. And it's just cool <laughs> to see, like, it's cool to see like the different kinds of people that are around and, and, and that come to the, to the university. And then, the alumni, man, they're they're so like they're all about Lincoln. They're 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 through and through orange and blue, and and I can say the same thing for all other HBCUs. That are saying that I mean I'm sure it's like that anywhere, but I mean they're they're really into what the university is about, and they love to wear their colors everywhere, and yeah. it's just really cool to see. That's awesome. Now the other question was, <clears throat> you talked about fr freshmen actually having an opportunity, uh, not necessarily using the the transfer portal. Uh, that's a big deal. So as parents and players are are taking a look at possibly Lincoln for the very first time, talk about kind of that opportunity and and why you're doing what you're doing with with younger players. I got you. I, um, you know, the, the transfer portal is going to be a huge thing. And, and I've been telling my assistant coach for a while now that I think what the transfer portal is doing for, for all sports, but for baseball, is that it's letting the better guys play in better programs. And the guys that might have had a shot at playing at one of those big time SC power five schools, they may not get that shot anymore because all they got to do is go to someplace else and find that guy to fill that hole, the, the void that they're missing. So what I think is going to happen in the next couple of years, it might even be happening this year, because now the COVID seniors are now gone. This is their last year. So yeah. after this year, there will be no more COVID guys, unless you have that guy that's playing his ninth year of college football. I don't know if you saw that the other day. That was kind of yeah, crazy. University of um, Miami. <laughs> yeah, University. I saw that. But um, <laughs> but I think that what it gives, what it gives us, and what I've always been in, uh, attributing success to, is guys that develop over the course of time. So if I'm recruiting you as an individual and I think you have some talent and I think I'm recruiting potential, I think you're going to come in that first year. And if you surprise us, you get a shot. You get 20, 30, 50 at bats. And if you do well, well, guess what? Now it's going to make my decision harder for next year to sit you instead of playing you. Right. Whereas if I bring in a junior college kid or a four-year transfer, I, I better be right. Yep. I better be right because if I'm wrong on that kid and I spend a lot of money on that guy – I'm going to look like 
I don't know what I'm doing. And I might not have a job for very long. So I like the fact that we bring in guys that are for you guys and develop. Now, we do bring in pieces. We'll bring in a catcher here, a pitcher here, an outfield. We will do that, um, but not as much. And, and also, and I mean, uh, and we'll, we'll just be real with everybody here. Um, our, our freshman academic money goes way further, and we don't have a lot of scholarship dollars. I'm sure that's going to be a question that you have. So we have 1.9 scholarships out of a full nine that we can get. In, uh, in in Division Two, so that doesn't leave me a lot of room to be wrong yep. in the, on a on a scholarship side. So if I can get guys with three fives and three six GPAs with good SAT scores, um, now I'm giving myself and my program a better chance to re- recruit guys that'll get between fifteen and eighteen thousand in academic money off of the top, which is thirty one thousand total out of state. Mm-hmm. Um, that makes my job easier because now I can sell. Now I can might pull a kid that's a Two nine to three zero oh, that won't get a lot of academic money and give him a little bit extra because this guy's going to get fifteen thousand in academic if that makes sense. So, yep. um, I think that's a, that's a big reason why I like going the freshman route. Um, it's part of the reason, but I also like the fact that we can develop guys. I'm a big develop guy, as I said in the beginning. So for me, it gives me a chance to see see guys get through four years. And listen, I, I have a list of like hundred and seventy nine players I've had come through my program in sixteen years. And we've had some guys transfer, but they all come back. And in one way, shape, or form, they come back. They come, they've been to alumni games. They'll reach back out to me. They'll graduate from their schools and still come back and say hi to their buddies. So, like, there's awesome. still a family feel at Lincoln. And that's what we love about it because the guys will always come back. They love – they. Awesome. It's, it's, when we say Lincoln pride, it, it's, it's, it's meaningful. That's really important. You know, there's always, they always talk about the fit. Coaches always talk about fit. And, and the fit is the school. Um, you know, the baseball, yes, the financial, yes, the school, you know, what, what, what that means. And I appreciate you kind of explaining to what that, that, uh, Lincoln pride really means. What kind of kids are you looking for coach? Tell me specifically the type of kids that will, would you be interested in, in, uh, in hearing from? I know the last time we spoke, I made you chuckle when I said this, but I need dirt bags. Um, and, and what I mean by that is I want guys that are, are willing to do anything to make a play, um, anything to help their team. We like team guys. I want guys that are willing to hit behind runners, guys that are that are willing to put a bunk down, sacrifice their own at bat for the betterment of the team. Um, and I got and I want guys that hit the ball out of the ballpark too. And I want guys that throw ninety seven miles an hour. I think what we're looking at are very specific people. So I want guys first and foremost that want to be at Lincoln that they think Lincoln's going to be their home and they can see themselves fitting there with no issues. We do talk about fit quite a bit. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's something that gets talked about a lot in, in our realm. And it, Lincoln University is a different kind of institution for a lot of people if culturally. Um, so if that's a fit for you, then we want you to be here. And that makes us want you even more because if you want to be at an HBCU and Lincoln's the, Lincoln's the place, we want you to be there. Um, I think the next thing is, are you good academically? someone we don't have to worry about. Yep. So if we're talking about a guy that's probably a 3-3 three, three or better in high school, then we don't have to worry about you academically. I'm not going to have to hold your hand, make sure you're going to classes, make sure you're going to study hall. makes my job a whole heck of a lot easier. Then we find ourselves later on in the recruiting process knowing that we might have to get a 2-6 to 2-8 guy, and we're going to have to watch him quite a bit academically because he might still be able to play and will be academically eligible through the NCAA, but we're going to have to make sure we watch him and and, and what he does academically pretty hardcore. And he doesn't get any special treatment because everyone else gets the same kind of treatment. If you drop below certain GPAs and you you have to go to study hall or you can't play, we don't take it. Oh, that's it. We got to find somebody else. Um, and then it comes to playing. And everyone's going to need arms. So I'm going to tell everybody every year we need arms. So whenever we ask people we need arms every year, we're going to need arms. Um, but I think it's the guys that are willing to compete the most uh, are the guys that we're looking for. Um, someone's going to say we need a, we need six, two and someone that runs a six, one, and they throw 88 plus, like those things are all great for us. And if we can find those guys, awesome. I want strike throwers. I want out getters and I want guys that can get hits. Now I know it's so broad and it's general, but at the end of the day, that's what I need. I need guys that can do those things. And if I can go see a guy that in high school or in on travel ball, he may not be the, a flamethrower. He's maybe 82 to 84, but he gets outs every time I see him play. 
good teams, bad teams, average teams. If he gets outs all the time, I want to see that kid because maybe we can develop develop him for, to be eighty eight to ninety. Maybe I don't I don't know, um, but that's my job. His job is to get outs. My job is to help him get there um, and get bigger, faster, and stronger. Um, you know, we want guys that want to be at Lincoln are going to be good GPA guys, really good teammate guys. Um, am I looking for a unicorn? If I say I, they have a good family too, maybe um, because some of the guys that we get come from, from families that struggle, single parent homes and things like that, which we're fine with. Um, yep. Thankfully I got my master's in counseling, so I, I can deal with some of that stuff. Um, but I think at the end of the day, the numbers do matter, but the guys that can play matter more. That's good. If I can say it that way. That's perfect. That's perfect. Coach has been a lot, but a lot of fun. Where do you, where can players get a hold of you? Where can they find you guys? Uh, are there college, do you guys have camps? Um, where, where, where are you, you and your, your uh, assistant coach? So uh, everything will be on uh, www.lulines.com slash backslash baseball. Um, you'll find all the information on there. Our camps are always going to be posted on there throughout the year. You can find everybody us on social media. Uh, we have at Coach Connor and at Coach Plow One. Um, that's both of us. And I believe that's on every social media thing. I'm, I think my, my thing's the same. Um, and then um, lulines.com, we have a ton of stuff on there. Um, from our website purposes, there'll be everything on there as well. But reach out. Uh, APLA at Lincoln.edu is, e- is the email. Or a Connor at Lincoln.edu is, the, is Coach Connor's email. Um, reach out to us. We'd love to talk to some guys and talk to some individuals. Individuals um, doesn't really matter to us who you are and where you where you're from. We're not very picky on regions. We'd like to get more Pennsylvania guys. That's something we've been trying to get into more. Um, we know we're, we are in a very tough state with the PSAC and and some of the other big time D1 programs, and we get that. Um, and then you got your your. Your Goldie Beacons in Wilmington, Delaware is right down the block, um, um, and University of Delaware, which is 30 minutes away. So we understand all those things, but um, we can play baseball too. And we got really good academics as well. We got a nice campus, 800 acres of land, beautiful baseball field. Take a look if you get a shot, <clears throat> if you get an opportunity to do so. Ask us any questions. We're open books. We're gonna, we're never gonna lie to anybody about stuff that we do. Um, and if we don't think it's the right fit, we will tell you. And if you don't think it's the right fit, all we ask is you tell us the same thing. That's perfect. You can find all the information on Lincoln University and Coach Plot on the Baseball Blue Book as well. So uh, free to download, check out the information, and this video is going to be there. So we're excited about promoting uh, Lincoln University, having you on. Coach, it's been an honor. Uh, I'm really excited about your program, what uh, what you're going to do. Um, and you bring you bring it, man. You, you The dirt bags is because that's how you uh, had to get – what had had to do or you this is what you had to do to get to where you're at so i think that uh 100%. it really makes it makes sense you kind of you're looking for kids that uh can put in the can put in the work so they thank you grind. very much i want grinders dirt bags get dirty let's go <laughs> isn't that what baseball is all about i mean it is baseball is the best it, man. it sure used to be i hope it gets i hope it gets back there pretty soon I, I'll tell you what, there's a big push and we're going to, we're going to go ahead and stop recording here. So um, yeah. I appreciate you uh, being on the program coach and I uh, look forward to uh, talking with you again. Thanks for the time. I appreciate ha- you having me. Okay. We are done. The only thing that I need to do, you see that little cloud in your, in-